Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. I hope everybody's doing well and keeping safe. If you're new here, my name is Kyle and I make language learning videos on the science behind language learning. Instead of diving in deeper into any one topic of language learning, I'm going to give you 10 general tips in this video to help you no matter what stage of language learning you're currently at, whether you're just beginning or already on your way to becoming fluent in a second, third or fourth language. Stay tuned until the end of the video so you don't miss out on anything that could potentially speed up the process. Okay, so the very first tip that we're going to go through today is motivation. This is probably more relevant for those that are just beginning or haven't even started their language learning yet, but it is worth to reminisce if you're further along the journey as well. This motivation doesn't have to stem from anything in particular, but picking one strong motivating factor is very beneficial, whether that be for work, for travel, if your partner is from that country and you want to talk in their language with their family, or even if you're just interested in the culture of that. Highlighting the importance of motivation would probably be easiest if we took an example. Secondary school children or high school students generally learn a language throughout their studies, throughout their education for years and come out with very, very minimal progress made in that language, only being able to basically introduce themselves. However, many people then proceed later in life to learn another language that they have personally chosen and notice tremendously faster progress because this self-initiative and having a goal and having a motivation will make the journey much more enjoyable and quicker. The second tip is consistency. I would really recommend you to try and develop a language learning habit or a language learning routine. This is one of the biggest faults for beginners when learning a language because they don't develop this routine and they lose the progress that they have made previously by not keeping up the practice. Once you're at a later stage in your language learning journey and you have much more basis already made in the language, you can afford to take longer breaks between study sessions because you won't forget it's more deeply ingrained but when you're just beginning everything is fresh nothing has fully soaked in yet you can lose that progress very very quickly sticking to a language learning schedule and being consistent when you're learning a language not only will make everything stick better but it would also speed up the process if you're looking for a full video on how long it takes to learn a language i will leave a link up here or in the description for you to watch after this video but basically the less breaks you're taking the faster you will learn the language pretty simple if other commitments or life things get in the way it isn't the end of the world and there's no point putting extra stress on yourself to do something that will just end up making you lose motivation because you'll be stressed about doing it or missing a day if you do miss a day just remind yourself that you were doing your best and that you're just going to pick it up the next day. Tip number three is to try and utilize the time not spent studying. This is basically just a, to find ways to incorporate the language into other aspects of your daily routine, daily life that isn't the time spent dedicated to learning a language. This increases the exposure you have to the language and it will help you immerse better in the language. If you spend one hour a day studying a language but you spend the rest of the time, rest of your free time doing other things while listening to languages or turning your phone into the language that you're trying to study, every time you look at your phone you're being exposed to it, you could listen to music while in the car or doing the dishes, you're being exposed to it. Just different things like that will help you immerse yourself in the language and boost your total daily immersion time. The next tip is listening. By incorporating listening into your routine, you will be able to train your ear and it will help you with your pronunciation because you'll be able to tell how the language actually sounds. Listening is probably one of the most underrated and underdeveloped or practiced skills with language learners because it's probably one of the hardest. But by actually practicing these listening skills, you can open yourself up to many, many, many more opportunities to actually get some practice in and, and immerse yourself better in the language, which I think is really important if you haven't figured out yet. And the better your listening skills are and your comprehension skills are, the more you can incorporate valuable listening time while you're doing other things. I think listening to music and translating the songs so you understand what they mean and then listening to them again this is comprehensible input, which I'll be doing a video on in the future. This comprehensible input is great practice because if you're listening to things that you have absolutely no idea what they're saying, it won't be as beneficial to you if you're, learn if you're listening to something that you know what it means. And also a big one is how are you going to have a conversation with a native speaker if you have no idea what they're saying because you haven't practiced your listening skills? If you, are you going to ask them to write everything down for you? No, probably not. You need to train this listening skill. 
very, very important. Okay, tip number five, halfway through now, is to keep it relevant and keep it interesting. So do whatever you can to make the language learning actually interesting and relevant to your life. There's absolutely no point in learning 20 words for different plant species in that language if you're not a botanist or really, really into gardening. Learn about things that you're actually interested in and, you're, and you want to talk about. And then after you've acquired the vocabulary, if you want to know how, a video here in the description. But once you have that vocabulary, try and use it. Try and write a piece, paragraph on journally.com, which I've talked about before. And another thing you could do is transcribe or translate songs. That's also really interesting if you're big into music. I personally really like to do that. And also listen to podcasts that you're interested in. I personally really enjoy fiction or educational podcasts. So I have a list of podcasts I would listen to in uh, Swedish, French. Uh, I haven't started any podcasts in Chinese yet because I'm not up to that standard yet but I would listen to stuff in Irish as well. Another tip for podcasts, if you are interested in doing something like that, is to find ones that are transcribed or have a have a transcript so you can read along while listening in the beginning. So, so that's two forms of input rather than just the listening. All in all, to sum up really quickly is be creative, make it interesting, keep it relevant. If you do those three, you will keep your motivation and you won't get bored with it. Tip number six is leaving your comfort zone. This is quite a, quite a bad habit of mine. When I reach a level that I'm comfortable with the language, I tend to get complacent and I don't have the determination to push myself to the more advanced level. In Swedish, I've learned <laughs> most of my um, most of my Swedish through the Harry Potter books and audiobooks. When I started this, um, the first book took ages to actually go through and understand because everything was new the the level of the language was much higher than I could, than I had at that time the second book was easier and I didn't need to translate as much and then now the third book I'm on now I would listen to when I'm going on walks and I would understand most of it without much difficulty anything I didn't understand I would understand from context I should be going back over it reading the reading the chapter again and underlining highlighting looking up learning that way but I haven't done that yet. So that is on my to-do list when I go back to learning Swedish is to just make it harder. Make it harder for myself. If it's too easy, I won't be learning. And that's something you can take away as well. If you're finding something too easy, push yourself. Make that breakthrough into the next stage. And time for number seven. And I know this one can be a difficult one for some people because this one is to find find a partner. This is, this is really helpful because if you have a partner, you push yourself. There's a aspect of comp petition, you want to improve, to match the other person. It's just a really, really good environment to learn a language because the competition is there, the drive to learn is there, but the anxiousness and nervousness to speak to a native speaker isn't there. And this really frees up a lot of the nerves that hold you back when you're trying to improve in a language because you're afraid to make mistakes. You might be still, but it's much less than if you were talking to a native speaker. I have regular calls in both Irish and French with my my friends in real life but if that's not something you currently have access to if your friends aren't as big into language learning as you are there are plenty of other websites and apps that you can find language learning partners and language exchange partners but if that's not something that you are comfortable with or you're not really ready for, ready for that stage yet or even if you are and you are currently doing that another tip is to talk to yourself and this can sound very strange and quite bizarre but it's really useful it's a great way to get into the habit of thinking in the language that you want to learn either in your head or out loud when nobody's around um, uh, you can narrate your life and narrate what you're doing every single day every single moment in the language and soon very soon you will probably pick up words that you don't know how to say you will catch yourself thinking oh how do i say that oh i really want to express this but i'm not sure how to do it write it down in your phone or on a if you carry a notebook or something and then look those up when you're in your dedicated study time and this will really rapidly advance your language learning progress because it's super relevant because you're doing it every day you could learn again 20 words for plants and not need them ever or you could learn words that you struggle to find when you're just doing your daily activities or having thoughts about something that you can use every day or very frequently. Next is to watch or find content to watch in your target language. This means Netflix 
or other media. I highly recommend the Chrome extension Learning Languages with Netflix, I think it's called. It'll be on the screen now. I suggest this because it's much, much more beneficial to watch a show in a different language with the subtitles in that language, not in your native language. Many people rely too heavily on reading their own language that they don't really process what's being heard properly. Really, really good example is there probably are thousands of people who have watched thousands of hours of anime that do not know any Japanese because they'll just be reading the English subtitles. So really, really try and force yourself to read along. It'll be on the screen. It's quite easy. Or you can pause, rewind, go through, save words. It's very, very useful. And that's something that I do a lot. I'm currently watching, I think in English it's called Call My Agent on Netflix, but it's 10% in the in French. Very very good show, I'm really enjoying it and I'm learning a lot. They speak very very fast so it takes me a while to get through one episode but that's fine. You can also find YouTubers to watch whether it be vloggers or anything else you're interested in. Try and find uh, YouTubers that make content in your native language that you can follow and that's regular content you can keep up with in a native setting. Or you can look at language learning channels to find more beginner or intermediate friendly content. I, I don't think people utilize YouTube as much as they could when learning a language, it is amazing. And last but not least is number 10, and that's don't be afraid. Again, much, much easier said than done. You're basically a baby again when you're learning a language because you can't express yourself. You don't know what any of the words are. You're just quite lost in your ability to communicate anything. And that's scary for a lot of people, especially for me. I would consider myself a perfectionist and there has been plenty of time when I haven't even tried to form a sentence or tried to speak out loud when in the language I'm learning because I wasn't a hundred percent confident that what I was saying was correct but that really really limits your progress and that's a really bad habit that I'm trying to get myself out of because I've realized that when you're talking to a native speaker in their language when you're trying you're putting in the effort to learn the language they're much much more forgiving and not as mean as you think they'd be you really want to embrace the kid again and just dive headfirst in with full confidence. This will come with practice. Yeah, you just try not to be afraid of making mistakes. The more mistakes you make, the more you will learn to not make those mistakes again. So it, it can be beneficial if you look at it from that side by making mistakes as long as they're being corrected. They can be corrected in the written format on journaly.com and native speakers or if you have a language learning partner and a language learning exchange partner or if you're friends with a native speaker, ask them to correct you not while you're speaking because that can be very very demotivating and very, very off-putting when, when you're trying your best to talk and they constantly interrupt you try and just have conversations and at the end of the conversation if ask them if they've noticed anything that you have made a few mistakes on just just go through it then at the end rather than keep interrupting your train of, train of thought and keep bashing you down while you're trying your best to uh, speak the language. And we've made it to the end of the video. I really hope that you enjoyed and you learned something useful. If you enjoyed, again, just consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It'll really, really help me out. And because I think motivation is one of the best factors when learning a language and it's a great foundation, comment what is motivating you to learn a language and what language you're learning. Stronger for guys. I hope you enjoyed and see you next week.